For I remember two weeks before she died, um, I asked her, "Mommy, who did you want to be at 16?" She's like, "I wanted to make clothes." Mm -hmm. I said, mm. "I said, Mommy, you meant to be a designer." I didn't yeah. go through all this suffrage, you know, for yes. you to play with the yeah. beats. Now nah, poetry, oh dear, <laughs> you know, the level of trauma that mm -hmm. I've, 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 I've dealt with has it affected me to the level, to the point that I will probably die of depression. Oh, my name is Linda Butare, <laughs> aka Nunu. I'm a jewelry designer. I'm a poetry curator for an event called Quivuga. I'm a proud mother of two, and I love being an artist. You can never take that away from me. Hey people, welcome and welcome to The Creative Citizen, a show where we're going to be talking about all things creativity with some of your favorite creative personalities. You might be wondering who I am. I am Anne, otherwise known as King Anne on all of my social media platforms and I am going to be hosting some of your ultimate, ultimate favorite people. Today with me, I have the amazing and the gorgeous, when you see how you see creativity, I promise. <laughs> You said your government names are. So my government name. I always confuse it name or names. I don't know either. Moving along. First of all, I am not an English person. I'm a Ugandan. So Orojungu <laughs> gives me some retro headache. Gary. Anyway, my name. Government name is Linda Butare. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my nickname is Nunu. From those of you of you who are from the West, mm. it means sweet, punchy, cute. The founder of Umoringa Creations. I design jewelry. And for those of you who have heard of Quivuga, it's about poetry, art, music, fashion. So I'm so honored to be here, and I'm thank you so much for hosting me. Thank you so much for allowing to be here. I got you, I got you. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned Quivuga. Mm -hmm. I feel like you've managed to build a really good platform for creatives through Quivuga. Mm -hmm. How has that journey been and how have you managed to maintain that? It's a. It's been honestly, I, I, I honestly love to give credit to the God that I serve. Mm -hmm. I would not want to lie that the journey has been hard. Mm -hmm. It's been difficult, mm. and being a poet, my words are very intentional. There's a difference between hard and difficult. So, mm. hard in the sense that it hasn't been hard in the sense that God bless me, the creatives showed up all the way from 2011, mm. right? So, they always showed up. So, I always knew there was going to be acts, I always knew that even the audience. The people, I was so shocked how people really appreci uh, appreciated. Yes, the word is appreciated. Mm. Um, poetry is because I started off as poetry. Mm. The difficult part was mm. partnerships, was um, the responses from, you know, my family, mm. um, even corporates, because I would, I would go up to corporates and say, listen, I need sponsorship, I need this. Mm. And they're like, what is this? What are you talking about? But when you're consistent and passionate about what you do, mm. You know, eventually your dream, you know, manifests. Yeah. So um, it's been such an amazing journey, honestly. I appreciate the difficulty that I went through because today, how many years later, Quivuga is still here. Mm. We've had ons and offs. We've had all kinds of seasons, but God has been amazing. And next Thursday, we have Quivuga happening. Love you know? it. Yeah. I can't wait to attend it. Thank you. And you are such a great poet. I feel like everybody should go to your Instagram and check out, especially the first poem on the, the one that is pinned. It's called Reflection. <laughs> oh it's gosh. called Reflection. And um, in that poem, you mentioned your fear of the unknown. Yeah. Is that something you still go through as a creative? I do. I definitely do. And how do you manage and... it? Yo, I would like to say that we all suffer from imposter syndrome. Absolutely. And I think as creatives, like, it's worse. Because mm. remember, you're stepping out from, one, the expectations your parents had of you, right? Mm. Your friends, you know? And just society in general. Yeah. So... For me, when you say that to me, I, I, I'm like, what? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm just a writer. I write poetry. Eh? Mm. Uh, because I've met amazing poets like the Jason Taros, the Lacares, mm. uh, Roshan Kamali. And even when I sit and talk to these amazing poets, they yeah. still tell me about the imposter syndrome, yeah. you know? So um, thank you so much for saying that, honestly. Welcome. But... Yes, I do, and I believe so many of us battle that, yeah. right? The fear of the unknown. Who doesn't? It doesn't even matter what what uh, occupation, you know. You could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a nurse, you know. We all have. It's it's a it's 
innately in, in, in human beings, right? Uh, but for me as a creative, as an artist, it's it's worse over because now I have to stand out, yeah? And say, um, uh, yo, I used to be so scared to introduce myself. So scared. The one time that um, God opened my eyes, I went for a cocktail party. Uh, it was a goodbye thing for one of my uncles who was like a top, top lawyer. Yeah. And then one of my uncles walked up to me and said, um, I was introducing him to another uncle, mm. right? And he's like, oh, you don't know, no, no. You know, she does these things of design and she does poetry. I didn't have an elevator pitch at the time because mm. I was very insecure about what I do. But when my uncle spoke of me like that, mm -hmm. for me, it just proved the consistency and standing strong in who I am. Like, I've always had that as a kid. Like, mm. I've never, anyone who knows me knows Nunu has always been weird with her fashion, has always been outspoken. But when I started Quivuga specifically, I got, I found my tribe. Yeah. And that gave me a level of confidence mm. to speak positively and confidently of who I am. Mm. And I didn't know that subconsciously that was going to spread out. That frequency, that energy, that vibration was going to spread out yeah. and eventually draw my tribe to me and then help me heal from imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been quite an amazing journey. I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm so happy. I'm so excited about where God has put me. But the moments will always be there. But all you have to do is remind yourself that, you know what, no, no, keep pushing, mm. keep believing in yourself because guess what? You're making a difference in other people's lives. Love it. Yeah. You know, the first time I ever heard of Quivuga, surprisingly, was through Creative Fridays. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? Where have I been? Have How I been living on a rock? How so I can't wait to attend on Thursday. <laughs> I really can't wait to attend. You also mentioned um, that your family wasn't really sure about this journey yeah, of yours. Yeah. Um, has that evolved over time? It has. Mm. It has. My mom, uh, may she rest in peace, mm. uh, the first Kivuga she attended, uh, she, she kept looking around and said, and when Yankori said, uh, like all these people have come to see you. I said, not me, mommy. They've come to see other artists. Yeah. So she's like, why are there so many people? And I was like, uh, because they love it, you know. And her perception changed. Mm. But even before the Quivuga, the, I, I, I told you guys I'm a jewelry designer. One time she was so mad at me. She was like, I can't believe I sent you to school. You went to university. I have a bachelor's in commerce from India and she's like I can't believe I sent you to school and you're there playing with beads you know and I remember telling her I looked her straight up in the eye and I said mommy have you ever lacked when we go to hospital your medical bills are catered for yeah. when you need clothes you have clothes mm. my kids are not lucky what's the problem like as parents who are gone mm. you know like and then she just kept quiet but I could still see the disappointment in her eyes of like, yeah. ah, I didn't yeah. go through all this suffrage, for you know, for this. you to play with the yeah. beads. Now, poetry, <laughs> oh dear, you know, like it's such a disappointment. Mm. But over time, when she saw, you know, me in magazines mm. and me in, on interviews and she's like, oh, okay. But there was still that Kathleen, but eventually by the time she passed, she was like, I'm proud of you. And yeah. that meant a lot to me. Love it. Yeah. And then, okay, I want to take you back to reflection now yeah. that you've mentioned your yeah. mom. Yeah. You mentioned um, being frightened yeah. of being her reflection. Yeah. Why? Uh, my mother battled with HIV, mm -hmm. which became AIDS. So for those of you who don't know the difference between HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. HIV is the virus and AIDS is a disease. Guys, study, Google, <laughs> learn, Okay please and this will even help us fight the stigma mm. so she had the virus for a very long time and then eventually it manifested into the disease which is aids mm. so i saw her with her and you know become this other human being that i don't know so that traumatized me in so many ways yeah. um then i i the fear I had of course from the constant disappointment she had in me of being a creative right mm. so i remember two weeks before she died um I asked her, mommy, who did you want to be at 16? And my mom was exposed, worked in the UN, world traveled, what? She's like, I wanted to make clothes. Mm -hmm. I said, mm. I said, mommy, you mean to be a designer? <laughs> the, the, the one you have judged. So you think she was projecting? Yes, <laughs> And I remember telling her, I was like, mommy, I'm going to make your dreams come true. You know? So many of our parents, because of, you know, 
how they grew up and the school systems. Remember, as is most yeah. of them studied, you know, in these Buranyanjis, the Antares, mm. the Budos, the whatever. So this whole colonialism thing, black power. Okay. <laughs> um, so she, she didn't get it, mm. but I'm um, I'm so proud that by the point that by the time she passed on, mm. she told me the truth. She said, I really wanted to be a designer. Yeah. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll carry it on. So when I talk about in that poem, when I say reflections of my mother, one, it's the stigma, the, you know, watching her go through all that. Mm. And in society today, the, the, the issues that I battle with, hence imposter syndrome mm. is, do I fit in? You know, my friends are this, my friends are that. I'm the one who has stepped out and I'm just saying, oh, no, no, the creative or will I fit in? Yeah. So I have those fears. Mm. And then every child really wants to emulate their parents, sure. right? So I'm like, will I ever, will I be able to, you know, fit into mommy's shoes? Be her but then again, is, with yeah. the battles that she dealt with, how, the level of trauma that mm. I've, 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 I've dealt with, has it affected me to the, le- to the point that, I will probably die of depression. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like, so there are all these fears that I deal with, but the one thing that I can say, Jesus, is my Lord and personal Savior and has healed me mm-hmm. and helped with a lot of this trauma. But don't forget, everybody that you look up to has a dark story, right? So what do you learn from that story? Pick the positives from that and focus on that. The fears are there, the unknown is there, but pick the positives and then always surround yourself with people who inspire you to be a better person, mm. you know? So that poem for me, sorry, really, <laughs> quiet. Sorry. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> and please keep that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that poem for me really was more of, um, it's okay, I might have these fears, I might have these insecurities, mm. but I'll focus more on the positives. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it, guys. Um, focus on the positives. Okay. Um, no, no. <laughs> Last question. This one is something that I'm struggling with right now. Okay. As a creative, how have you managed to set up your boundaries? What do you mean set up your boundaries? Like to define who I am? Absolutely. One, everything I should speak of or about should reflect on me. So if I say I'm a jewelry designer, mm. I should be wearing my jewelry. Sorry for the guy falling. It was, uh, <laughs> testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> I just need to understand that the product has to be reorganized. You know what I mean? I'm not even embarrassed about that. You see, it's right? okay. Um, yeah. So what is your brand? Who are you? Mm. Can, when, when I have an amazing friend called Didan. I love her so much. She's but, right here. <laughs> Pun. <laughs> She's holding my handbag right now. <laughs> Dina and I have known each other since we're 17, right? Mm-hmm. And when I see her emceeing, acting, and being the superstar that she is, I'm not shocked because I saw that from when we were kids, yeah. right? So when you say I am this, I am that, can you show it? Can you reflect? Don't yeah. be fearful. But it, it really goes back to uh, one of the talks we had today mm. uh, on, Cre- on Creative Friday. What is your elevator pitch? So when someone says, hi, who are you? Uh, 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 Don't uh, start uh, uh, No, my name is Linda Butare, <laughs> a.k.a. Nunu. I'm a jewelry designer. I'm a poetry curator for an event called Quivuga. I'm a proud mother of two. And I love being an artist. You can never take that away from me. Besides... Period. I, it shows on me, right? Own it. Right? So, whatever it is that you are, mm. let it speak. Absolutely. Don't let people try to figure out, does she sell tomatoes? <laughs> oh, man. Eh? Mm. One, let everything you do speak about itself. Mm. Either on you, or you have a portfolio, mm. or you have a CV, whatever it is. And then elevator pitch is very important when somebody asks you, who are you? Bam. In two seconds, who are you? You don't know who you're meeting. You don't know what opportunity mm. you're going to miss or get at that exact moment. Mm. So be confident. Be your authentic self. Let nobody else define you, whether your family, whether your friends, whether it's society. Mm. Be confident. I promise you, I'm a living example of believing in myself. <laughs> I'm, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> because when I grow up anyway, Bless I want you. to be like you. Bless you. You are your own person, <laughs> King Anne. King Anne. You know me, and thank you so much for hosting me today. Thank you so much for accepting to be here. I got you. So we're gonna play a little cheeky game. Okay. Um, (laughs) 
I'm going to ask you rapid fire questions. Okay. You only have 30 seconds to think about it. Okay. And give me an answer. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if we were to go back to in time, mm-hmm. which historical figure would you love to meet and have a conversation with? Shaka Zulu. Why? <laughs> Would you ask why Shaka Zulu? I'm curious. He was fun. Okay, he was strong. Mm. Um, I feel Shaka Zulu really, really two people. Why, why do I say one? But anyway, Shaka Zulu. Okay, he stood so much for his people. I'm a proud Pan Africanist. Mm. Okay, then I love the culture, the way they used to dress. There's some dark stuff, but you yeah, know, you get. Please quickly another person. Uh, Selassie, hell Selassie. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Ethiopia is one country that was not colonized. Can you, you get what I mean? Abyssinia, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry you asked me one person I've said to. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Mm-hmm. Love that information. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, who would you love to collaborate with right now? In what regard? On, in, in, well, you write poems yeah who do you think you'd write a bomb po- poem with george the poet okay okay yeah talk to him I... let him know george <laughs> <laughs> Hala. um this one is a little bit don't 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 punch me in the face okay poetry or jewelry you have to pick one what yeah that's evil i'm sorry what? I'm sorry. I'm 30 seconds. Oh my god, I can see the dance first. <laughs> I know the dance is like, oh. no, no, don't do it. I can answer for her. Oh, I have to take sorry. Guys. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'd say? Poetry. Why? Yeah. She picks poetry because her poetry speaks through her jewelry also. Yes. So yes. those two are together. Sorry, yes. boom. Did I get you right? I got you. I got you, sis. I got you. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Why she's my girl. Really? Thank you. My jewelry it tells stories, and I'd honestly pick. Thank you, Didan. I love you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a storyteller at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. everything about me um, is about telling a story. So I'd pick poetry. This was so much fun. I love having you here. Oh, thank you, and you're so cute. And keep doing what you do. Thank you. Don't give up on your dream. And this is kudos to guys behind the camera. Love you guys so much. And thank you so much for having me on this. I'm so blessed and I'm so humbled. We need to let them know about Quivo Guy again. Yes, Quivo Guy is on the 28th of September at Motive starting at 7. Just 20K, guys. Just 20K. And this goes back, honestly, 10% of the proceeds go to Kasese Restoration Center. Please follow them. And then, of course, to facilitate and take care of you know, everybody that it comes for Kuga to help me with stage, with lighting, with camera. <laughs> yeah, please, let's support the creative industry. We got this. Thank you again. Thank you. Love having you. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode of The Creative Citizen. Until next time, please, please. Yeah, just do this. A course sign from you. 